Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bennett again. We are continuing our series on forces and we're gonna combine both friction and gravity into one video. Remember, this is really surface level stuff. I'm hitting just the very basic ideas, um, which is why I'm combining them into two because friction and gravity are both mechanical forces. In other words, they require an interaction between two objects. So when we're talking friction, this can be a box on the on a table, it can be your hand against hand. Gravity is any two body with mass. Any two bodies with mass exert some form of gravity on each other. We're gonna kinda hit them both, so this video might be a little bit longer than normal, but they flow into each other uh, because, again, they're both mechanical forces. We're looking at interaction. And starting with friction, this occurs when two surfaces, they slide past one another. So you can model friction by taking your hands and you know sliding them past each other you feel that heat generated that's because of the friction and this is a force caused by these things called micro welds and a micro weld is a sticking point between two objects our surfaces they're not perfectly smooth there's little ridges and jags and things here where two things can stick and on your hands right you've got little grooves and bumps your fingerprints they stick past each other that's what helps us hang on to smooth objects really it was we're forming these little micro welds there's three types of friction. Static friction, remember this is no movement. So on our diagram, so this is your diagram here. And these are not quite free body diagrams. They're similar in nature, but they're not as complex as a free body is. We're not even gonna do free body in this series. I might make a video later. Um, but really what we've got is we have a force acting one direction and friction is acting the other direction if these forces are equal and again I know my arrows aren't perfect but the force of friction is equal to the force positive whatever force is being exerted this is static friction if it's not moving because of a connection to micro welds that might be happening on that surface kinetic friction this is movement okay so we have an unbalanced force which accelerates our object so if we diagram it grabbing blue so my forward right my force positive is larger than the friction of the floor or your hand so this is the force of friction uh, if this is greater in the forward direction this object is now going to accelerate we have a net force pushing forward rolling friction is a little bit different we call this traction commonly so when we talk about my tires don't have traction if you live in a snowy environment we don't get traction on our tires and this is caused actually by the rotation of a tire so if my tire is rotating that way i need that tire to stick a little bit and so our force of friction is actually in the same direction so if these are equal to one another there is a zero net force and you don't move so think of tires spinning in the sand or in the mud or in snow if the tire rotational uh, energy is higher or the force is higher and it can that can push your object so you have a net force and your object begins to move so traction in general is called where's rolling friction really rolling friction so let's jump over to gravity remember by definition gravity is the attraction between any two objects with mass gravity is very very weak extremely weak so the, the amount of gravity between any two objects is much 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 smaller than even the attraction or the, the repulsion of the nuclear force that keeps our atoms together and this is calculated using the mass of two objects and their distances from one another this is the law of universal gravitation where F is the force of gravity, G, this is called the gravitational constant. And I'm, you're not going to need to know that for my class in particular. If you do, you can go and find another section. And so we've got the size, the mass is multiplied, divided by the distance squared. So what this means is higher mass, right? We have higher gravity. But the higher the distance is the lower gravity. So the product of the masses divided by the distance squared, which means if I go from one meter to two meters, my gravity drops from one to a quarter. So the distance is squared. So you need really, really big objects to be really close together to measure that gravity. Now we can do that because the earth is really big and we are very small and we're very close. So even though the sun is much more massive than the earth, 
we can't feel its gravity because it's so far away. It's 98 million miles from us. So the gravity we feel from the sun is much lower than the gravity we feel from the earth because the distance changes that factor so significantly. Simplified, we can solve for weight. Remember, weight, that's an H, not an A, sorry. Remember, weight is the gravity, the force of gravity acting on a body. So if we know the gravitational acceleration of an object times its mass, we can find force in newtons. So force in newtons, in other words, uh, so the mass times the gravity, or the acceleration, let's do it that way, the acceleration due to gravity. And we're going to take a look at some examples in a later video. But taking the law of universal gravitation, we can simplify it down to the weight equation. Force here is given in newtons. Okay, force is in newtons. Okay, that's why weight can change because the force on my body, the force due to gravity changes based on my location. So on Earth, I'm accelerated downward 9.8 meters per second per second. On the moon, it's about 0 0.37 meters per second per second. So I weigh much less on the moon than I do here on Earth because I'm accelerated down at a lower rate due to the force of gravity. So again, force, or excuse me, friction and gravity are mechanical forces. They require two things to interact. Uh, if you have questions, if I have you in class, please ask me in class. If not, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to, to stay on top of answering those questions. And take a, uh, make sure you subscribe to follow up with subsequent videos that dive more into depth uh, onto some of these ideas.